How Hitler was even more evil than you thought, the little-known stories of Hitler's many Jewish friends. Hitler harbored an intense and obsessive hatred of Jews that would define his political career and ultimately lead to the Shoah, the systematic genocide of Jews that resulted in the deaths of more than six million Jews. To illustrate just how intense this hatred was, here is a quote from Hitler as early as 1922, ten years before a plurality of the German electorate would vote for his party, eleven years before him becoming chancellor, and nineteen years before the Holocaust began. Hitler, once I really am in power, my first and foremost task will be the annihilation of the Jews. As soon as I have the power to do so, I will have gallows built in rows, at the Marienplatz in Munich, for example, as many as traffic gallows. Then the Jews will be hanged indiscriminately, and they will remain hanging until they stink. They will hunger as long as the principles of hygiene permit. As soon as they have been untied, the next batch will be strung up, and so on down the line until the last door in Munich has been exterminated. Other cities will follow suit, precisely in this fashion, until all Germany has been completely cleansed of Jews. And here is an anecdote from Magda Goebbels given right before the end of the war. You know how I told you at the time quite frankly what the Führer said in the Café Ernest in Munich when he saw the little Jewish boy, you remember? That he would like to squash him flat like a bug on the wall, I couldn't believe it and thought it was just provocative talk. But he really did it later. It was also unspeakably gruesome. It is true that anti-Semitic attitudes were prevalent in Europe during the 19th and 20th centuries, but to hate Jews with the level of intensity that Hitler did. One would think that some personal experience would have been necessary to trigger it. But not only did Hitler not have any bad experiences with the Jews in his life, but it seems they were particularly kind to him. Dr. Eduard Bloch, Hitler's Jewish physician, is the most famous example. This Jewish doctor treated his mother's cancer to the best of his ability while charging Hitler's then poor family reduced prices, and sometimes did not charge them at all, for top-notch health care. Hitler was so grateful that he granted Dr. Bloch special protection from persecution decades later after annexing Austria. Following the Anschluss, Nazi Germany's annexation of Austria in 1938, Hitler personally intervened to exempt Dr. Bloch from the severe persecution that all of the other 200,000 Austrian Jews were subjected to. The Nazi regime even permitted him to immigrate to the United States and sell his home at market value, which was highly unusual in light of the distressed sales of Jews at the time and the Nazi expropriation of Jewish assets through the Reich flight tax. Moreover, the blocks were permitted to take out of the country the equivalent of 16 Reichsmark, much higher than the mere 10 Reichsmark limit imposed on other Jews. Hitler even called Dr. Bloch an Edel Jude, meaning noble Jew, and said about him, If all Jews were like him, there would be no Jewish question. But believe it or not, Dr. Bloch was far from the only Jew who went out of their way to help Hitler. Another example is Samuel Morgenstern as well as several other Jews in Vienna. Following his rejection from art school, Hitler lived in homeless shelters and made a meager living selling paintings on the streets of Vienna. Hitler's biggest customer and most important source of income during this time was a Jewish businessman named Samuel Morgenstern. In addition to buying Hitler's art regularly, Morgenstern influenced many in his network to do the same. In addition to providing capital to Hitler's struggling art business, Morgenstern used his network to help Hitler make sales he wouldn't have made otherwise. Moreover, according to his database, the majority of people who purchased Hitler's paintings were Jewish. Jewish people were the only way Hitler could even put food on the table. Hitler gave Peter John of the main archive of the NSDAP an appreciative statement in the 1930s that Morgenstern had been his savior during the Vienna period and had given him many important commissions. Unfortunately, Morgenstern did not receive any special protection. Like most Jewish business owners at the time, Morgenstern's business was Aryanized, with Morgenstern being forced to sell it to an Aryan, without receiving the 620 Reichsmark purchase price. His license to practice his trade was also revoked and he was prohibited from working. In a letter to Hitler, Morgenstern requested special protection from persecution. However, the letter was intercepted by bureaucrats and never reached Hitler. In the event that Morgenstern's letter had reached Hitler, he may have granted Morgenstern special protection, but the world will never know for sure. Nonetheless, the Morgenstern family was eventually deported to the occupied Poland, where Samuel Morgenstern died in the Lodz ghetto and his wife most likely died in Auschwitz-Birkenau by gassing. Hugo Gutmann, a Jew and one of Hitler's commanding officers during World War I, is another example. Gutmann went out of his way to recommend Hitler for the Iron Cross Award. As a result of this Jewish man, Hitler was able to achieve one of his greatest achievements. 
Gutman was offered some protection after the passing of the Nuremberg Laws in 1935. He lost his German citizenship and was formally discharged from the veteran roles of the army, but still continued to receive a pension, possibly due to Hitler's influence. He was arrested by the Gestapo in 1938, but released as a result of his history. He immigrated to Belgium in 1939 and then to the United States in 1940 just prior to the German invasion of the country. Additionally, Ernst Moritz Hess, Hitler's World War I commanding officer, was Jewish and commanded great respect from Hitler. He was offered temporary protection from persecution. But these privileges were largely removed in 1941, with him spending the rest of his war as a forced laborer, his sister being murdered at Auschwitz, and his mother escaping to Switzerland. He died in 1983. Another example is Rosa Bernal Nino. While Hitler was in power, he developed a close friendship with this girl with whom he shared a birthday. Hitler was aware that this girl had a Jewish mother, but he still adored her despite this. However, the SS eventually forbade them from Hitler's property due to her Jewish ancestry, which left Hitler devastated. Hitler was furious with those who had denounced his little friend, saying that There are some people who have a positive genius for spoiling all my little pleasures. Nuena died on October 5, 1943 at 17 years of age of spinal poliomyelitis. As another example, Emile Maurice was a close friend of Hitler who helped him organize the Beer Hall Putsch, stuck with him in prison, assisted him during his political career, and eventually became his chauffeur and one of his closest associates. The fact that he was half-Jewish was not known to either him or Hitler until a few years after their friendship began. Nonetheless, after this was discovered, Hitler stood by his old friend and allowed him to remain in his high position despite other Nazi officials urging him to be expelled. Maurice and his brothers were informally declared honorary Aryans and allowed to stay in the SS however, the fact that one of Hitler's closest and most loyal allies was Jewish did not seem to change his opinion of the Jewish population at large whatsoever. There are other examples as well. In summary, not only did Hitler not have any negative experiences with the Jews in his life, but several Jewish people went out of their way to help him. But despite the fact that several Jewish people treated Hitler with the utmost kindness and went out of their way to help him, Hitler still harbored a deep hatred for Jews and largely dedicated his life to their literal extinction. So the next time someone tells you that they can't be racist because they have a black friend, remind them that Hitler had many Jewish friends, and yet this is how it turned out.